Hello there, and welcome back to The Chaps Guide, the channel where we go on a journey together through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And today, well, you've seen the thumbnail. It is my top watch rules for men. Because I think many men take for granted that most complex of all machines, which they wear on their wrist every day. And today I'm going to give you some tips and advice that will help you in your relationship to get the very best out of your wrist chronometer. So let's get started. My first tip is probably the most obvious and that is to wear a watch in the first place. Because you know I went for about 10 years of my adult life not wearing a watch in my 30s because I just couldn't be bothered. I thought it was uh, being you know, quite luxurious in not wearing a watch. Um, also, because I couldn't afford a really good watch, I would rather wear nothing at all than wear something which was cheap. So that was kind of my mindset. It was the wrong way to look at it, because men forget that your wristwatch is a highly obvious way that you get to display some elements of your taste, some elements of your general class as the way you dress, and certainly some elements of your personality in what is a very usable and practical piece of jewellery. I mean, let's be honest, most jewellery that people wear has virtually no practical application in the modern world. But your wristwatch serves not only as jewellery, it serves not only as a window to the world of your personal taste, but also it does something for you. It keeps track of the time. Now, people may say, I don't need a watch. You know, I've got a, a phone that I can check for the time or I'm sat in front of a computer all day. You know, you look down to the bottom right of the screen and the clock's telling you the time. But that kind of overlooks the, the, the whole thing around understanding the watch as a personal extension of your style. Now, my second bit of advice is to choose your watch for the situations that you're going to encounter in life. Now, whereas, you know, when you start off, you might think, well, I'm just going to own one watch and that'll do me for everything in my life. And that's great. If you can find that watch which fits that bill in your life, you're on a winner and you're going to save money. But for me, as a man who enjoys wearing watches, to own a single watch would be like owning a single pair of trousers. You know, whilst that pair of trousers might be great for casual situations, it's not something I could wear in formal situations. And I feel the same way about wristwatches. I've got a small collection of only four watches or so, which I know will cover me for most of the situations in my life. I mean, if you think about it, nobody would look stylish wearing uh, an eye watch with a tuxedo. In fact, a little style tip there, you shouldn't wear any watch with your tuxedo because it's bad manners to, to your host to be seen to be checking your watch meaning you're keeping track of time and you know you're not really enjoying the party or whatever so you never wear a watch with your tuxedo but for me i've just just a couple of watches which suit my life now i've got a, a gmt watch which i like to wear i've got a couple of gmt watches because i really like the practicality of having the ability to keep track of more than one time zone because i've got friends who live in a different time zone if i'm traveling it's nice to know you know what the time is at home when you're abroad if you want to ring back to family and friends. Um, if you're somebody who likes participating in water sports, you know, you might want to get a dive watch because a dive watch allows you to, you know, get wet repeatedly. Normally you've got a stainless steel bracelet so it doesn't get affected or damaged by the water all the time. If you're somebody who is highly stylish, who likes to wear, you know, uh, quite classic clothing, perhaps a watch on a leather strap might be more in keeping with your lifestyle. But to get the best out of any wristwatch, it's always best to think about the situations that you're going to encounter in life and make sure that you've curated a little collection, which means you're always covered with a watch for the situation that you're going to find yourself in. Now, my next tip is to choose a watch which is the right size for your wrist, because this is an area of contention. Right? In recent years, men's watches have been getting bigger and bigger. Whereas, you know, if you look back to the, the golden era of men's style, you will see many men's watches being 34 millimeters, 36 millimeters, the classic size. You will see today, you know, not uncommon to see 42 to 46 millimeter watches. And for me, that's you know, definitely trending towards far too large. Because I always think 
that the wristwatch is meant to be an accessory to your overall package of style. It's not meant to be the main attraction. And if you're wearing a 46 millimeter wristwatch, on your wrist, I've got an example of a very large watch here. This is a, for me, a gigantic watch, which if you were to wear it, would dominate your appearance. People would, you know, their eyes would be drawn to this. For me, with a relatively small wrist, it would be like wearing, you know, a wall clock attached to my wrist, and I wouldn't feel comfortable with it. It would look outlandish, and it wouldn't suit my understated classical style at all. Um, buying a watch which is the right size for your wrist is very important because it means that that watch will be comfortable and it will be able to be worn across the widest variety of your clothing. Now I've got a relatively small wrist, about six and a half, just a little bit more than six and a half inches. So I'm quite conscious not to get watches which are big, huge, hulking things that are going to detract from my overall appearance. Now, if you look at very classical styles, um, one of my favourite watches, which I wear all the time, is a 36mm Rolex Datejust. This watch has been around since the 1940s. It came in this size in the 1940s, and I think it still looks classically beautiful today, and its proportions are great. Although most men would probably say that 36 millimeters is too small for a man's watch these days. It fits me great, and I buy what suits me, not is what fashionable, uh, is fashionable and trendy at the moment. So always remember, buy things which suit you rather than whatever is currently the most trendy item, because, you know, trends are fleeting. Style is permanent. So permanent style is something which is gonna look good in 10 years and is not gonna be out of fashion next year. Now, if you've got a smaller wrist, I always recommend that, you know, nothing over sort of 40 millimetres, 40 being the sweet spot in many men's considerations. So 40 millimetres, always good. But think about the shape of your wrist as well, because if your wrist is sort of a, a, a more round in its profile, the watch is going to sit less comfortably than if your uh, wrist is more sort of oval. So there's a flat space on the top of your, your bone so that the watch can sit. So always important to choose the right watch size for your wrist. So, congratulations, you've decided to invest in a watch and you've moved away from checking the time on your iPhone. Well done, you're taking good steps towards being a stylish chap. Now you've bought your watch, Next question is, which wrist do you wear it on? Well, the obvious answer is your non-dominant wrist. So if you're right-handed, you wear it on the left wrist for obvious reasons. Firstly, you know, if your dominant hand is the one you use the most, clearly, it's gonna have more risk of you hitting your watch or smacking it up against the wall or whatever than if it's on your less dominant hand. So most people tend to wear it on their, their left hand if they're right-handed or right hand if they're left-handed seems the simple answer. Um, also, the other good reason to wear it on your left wrist, unfortunately, if you're right-handed, is the orientation of the crown. So the crown, which controls your watch, uh, you know, tends to be pointing downwards if worn on the left wrist. So in other words, the crown's on the right-hand side of the dial of the watch. Uh, and so it's accessible if you need to change the time, uh, and it makes it a lot more easier to use on the go. Um, However, that said, you know, how often do people actually need to access the crown on a day-to-day -day basis? I doubt if at all. So it doesn't really matter. And if it's an important feature for you, you know, certain manufacturers like Tudor, they do make watches with the crown on the other side for people who are perhaps right-handed and would prefer to have that crown orientation uh, in the normal fashion. But for most people, worn on the less dominant wrist, less chance of damaging the watch. Now the next tip we need to address, now we've decided we're going to wear a watch and which wrist we're going to wear it on, is the fit of the watch. Now this is a really important thing. If your watch is uncomfortable and doesn't fit you well, you will be inclined not to wear it. And you won't get your money's worth out of that important investment into your style wardrobe that you've made. Now, this is entirely a matter of personal choice. For me, I prefer my watches to be quite snug. In other words, no movement, lateral or vertical, on the wrist. I like my watch to be comfortably held in place, but not so much that it's digging into my wrist at all, so that when I remove my watch, there are no indentations on my wrist caused 
by the bracelet digging into my wrist. But again, I acknowledge some people will feel totally different about this. Some people like to have a much more, um, you know, comfort in their watch so it rides up and down the wrist quite readily. For me, I like to wear my watch above the bone on my wrist, which kind of controls the watch, stops the watch going down and digging into the back of my hand, causing an uncomfortable indentation or, you know, just general discomfort when I'm wearing the watch. Other people, you know, they prefer to have that movement in their watch. It's entirely up to you. In the modern era, you know, many watches these days have adjustability on the go because your wrist tends to increase in size, uh, you know, in, in hot weather in particular, you know, your blood pressure may go up and you've got some large veins running through the back of your wrist, obviously. So you might find that your wrist gets much larger in the summertime and many watches, um, tends to be more expensive ones have you know things like easy links and uh, glide lock uh, clasps on them which allow the watch to be adjusted on the go uh, so think about these things you know whatever is most comfortable for you is the best way to wear your watch there's no hard and fast rule there it's all about you and your comfort now the next thing to talk about is that strap the thing which secures the watch to your wrist and you know, makes the difference between a wristwatch and a pocket watch. Now, this again is something which you can choose dependent on the lifestyle that you lead. Now, if you're somebody who you know you're gonna get your watch wet regularly, clearly having a stainless steel or some other sort of metal strap is going to be the way forward. Because if you have a leather strap on your watch, it's gonna break down, it's gonna deteriorate. Leather doesn't like getting repeatedly soaking wet, whereas stainless steel or some other perhaps more precious metal will be entirely impervious to it. If you're somebody who wears a suit or very formal clothing all the time, uh, a good option to consider is the leather strap. You know, these tend to be more classic, more stylish, more traditional. And, you know, they, they definitely have the lowest profile. They're less blingy, you know, they're, they're less ostentatious and that's what many people would choose. But the beauty is, with watch straps, they're easily changed. It's just a very simple operation. You can change from a stainless steel strap to a leather strap to a NATO fabric strap, depending on the situation that you intend to go into. Um, so this is the beauty of a watch strap. Me, if it was down to me and I could only choose one watch strap, that would be a stainless steel bracelet because I think it covers you across the variety of situations. It does look perfectly acceptable with a business suit in a formal manner, as well as great with your, even your, just your swimming trunks on the beach in the summertime. It's a watch strap or a style which can bridge the whole variety of situations you're likely to find yourself in. Now I'd like to make a quick point here about smart watches or fitness trackers or these whole variety of technological marvels which really bring great interest and usefulness to our lives. And I'm somebody who owns one as well. I like to do a bit of running and I use uh, a Garmin fitness tracker. It really is so practical, really helps me with monitoring my performance. But what I don't do is consider this to be a wristwatch. I think of it as a utility tool and I treat it as such. Um, people who tend to wear these as their main functional watch, just be conscious that it does or it could degrade the styling of the things that you wear with it. Now, that's not to say I don't think that they're marvelous bits of technology which can bring great function to your life, but I treat them in a separate category to my wristwatch. And you know, if you're somebody who really loves them, but you also want to cut a dash with your watch, you've got two wrists. You can wear your functional wristwatch on one arm and your utility tracking tool on the other arm. It doesn't look ridiculous in this day and age, so many people do it, but I never marry these two items and consider them to be watches. One's a watch, one's a utility tool, never the twain should meet. And finally, choose a watch which suits you the styling of which complements your life and the way that you like to dress and the things that you like to undertake in your daily life. You know, pick something which complements the sports that you undertake or the clothing that you wear on a daily basis. 
do not miss up the opportunity to demonstrate your personal taste and rakish style to the world at large, because the wearing of a watch is an important window into the character of the person whose wrist it is on. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this discussion we've had today about the watch rules for stylish men. If you have, I would encourage you to give us a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. That way you won't miss any of our future material. And until the next time we meet, I will be keeping track of the time by my watch. I hope you'll be doing the same. And until then, take care. See you soon.